Hello, my name is Wayne Godsu with the Avaya Service Ability Engineering Team. This tech tip will cover an overview of the Avaya VSP9000 Flight Recorder Utility and the process to capture flight recorder data from the VSP9000 system. In our tech tip, we will cover a brief overview of the Flight Recorder Utility. We'll look at logging into the VSP9000 chassis. We'll capture specific flight recorder data by slot with the flight recorder all one command. We'll also capture flight recorder data for the entire chassis with the flight recorder all all command. And finally, we will view the flight recorder archive content. The VSP9000 flight recorder utility is a troubleshooting tool that is much like a black box data recorder on an airplane that captures historical and current state information for kernel, system, and application data. The flight recorder consists of persistent memory and always-on trace data that can be used to isolate system faults. The flight recorder data can be accessed on demand at any time when debugging the system. The always-on trace element of flight recorder creates a circular log of every trace call executed. This process is independent of the trace level enabled by the user. This allows for 128K of storage for central processor trace records, 32K for input-output trace records, as well as 16K of switch fabric records. Because the trace data performs circular logging, pay special attention to the timestamp in the log file. There are four options that allow you to collect specific types of data when using the flight recorder. The all command is the most complete of the options, gathering persistent memory, trace data, and creates an entire archive in the form of a tarball for easy export. The archive command will create a tarball of existing files created. The snapshot command will capture persistent memory data. And finally, the trace command will gather always on trace data. These options can be run on a particular slot or all slots on the chassis. The output of the command will provide the file location that can be used when retrieving the data from the VSP9000 system using FTP. For example, we'll get logged into our chassis with the RWA user ID and default password. Next, we'll run the enable to get into enable mode and then we'll run flight recorder all one. This will archive all of the data from slot number one. So you can see it's going through the persistent memory. Next it will run the trace data and finally it will archive all of this information for slot number one and give you the location of that archive file. Next we'll run the flight recorder all all command. This will actually go through the entire chassis in all slots and archive all data for those slots. Again, you'll see it go through the persistent memory and trace data and archive that for each slot on the chassis. It will move on from slot number one to the next available slot on the chassis that is populated. Now that the archive command is completed, we'll actually look through the archive directory and have a look at the archive files that have been created. We're going to cd into init flash archive one directory and do a listing here to see the archive files. As you can see, there's an archive file that we've created and we'll have a look at that in our next example. Here's an example of our archive tar file. The first three files in the archive are part of the flight recorder archive process and are not used for troubleshooting. The rest of the archive consists of the configuration file, the log file for the system chassis, the system messages on the chassis, the persistent memory file, the always on trace data file, and the version.cfg file, which has our software release number. This file can now be used for troubleshooting the chassis. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. 
We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.